Hey all, it's Mooch. Welcome to Mighty MX Episode 9, where we test the broadside mods. Broadside mod. Uh, the normal setup, 60 amp power supply to simulate a battery, so it's a constant voltage, so we don't have to deal with that variable. An electronic load, always drawing 30 amps, so you don't have to deal with coil resistances changing as they get hotter or colder. Something to measure the resistance of the tube, and a voltmeter to measure the voltage drop across the posts of a Cosmonaut RDA. And the first thing we'll do is a tube measurement resistance just to uh, check with metals, difference between different metals and things like that. Um, okay, and it's got the pin that's attached there. And there's a sleeve inside, which is nice. It's great safety on this one. And we're at zero ohms when their probes are touching together, which is good. You should always zero out the setup. And we got 0 0.028. Take multiple measurements. 0 0.027. And what I'll do is take five. And we throw out the high and low. 0 0.27, 0 0.26. Writing down. Rotating some. Point zero two five. It's bouncing between them, but that's okay. And one last one, and that's very low compared to the Dreamer and the Machina. So I think it may have a lot to do with the connection between these pins and this. When you're down here in the micro ohms, the 25, 27 micro ohms we're at, um, the way the connection is made can make a difference. But this is just side data and hopefully it proves useful later. If not, we will toss it and putting it back together again. And this uses a clutch plate. When you press down, the plate pops out to the side and makes contact here, not on your battery. So there's no arcing on your batteries. If there is any arcing, it'll be inside there. And we are using a solid aluminum slug, six micro ohms, excuse me, nine micro ohms for this to pass the current through the mod so we can measure the voltage across positive side down according to the directions and let's measure the voltage drop when we pass 30 amps through it now I'm sending a two second pulse and eliminate the variables involved when and you'll see the voltage here is 3.5 volts across it now 3.5 volts of the power supply I push the button first to close the contacts then I fire a two second pulse and we read it here this prevents any arcing from occurring when well, we don't want it to happen. I don't want that variable now. I'll do separate arcing testing later. And, unfortunately, I have to stop and put some grip tape on this. Okay, I do that just to make the grip consistent for all the mods. It's hot as Hades here, so if you can hear the air conditioning. And it just makes more consistent uh, pressing. At least eliminate the variable of my hand slipping and stuff like that. And what we'll do is, and it's kind of, it's actually very hard to hold a consistent button press to read here, but uh, we will do that. And firing. Okay, it was 26 millivolts, 0 0.026 volt drop, 0 0.026, 0 0.027, recording these. Point zero two six. Actually, rounding up is point zero two seven. Point zero two seven. That's incredibly consistent. That is great to see. All this will be explained in the tables. And that's it for the voltage drop testing. Yep. For the arcing testing, I don't pulse away this power supply like crazy. I just I kind of like that power supply. What we do is VTC5 battery. Let's put that here. And we use this 2.2 ohm resistors in parallel, giving us 0.1 ohms with a VTC5 battery. And let's see. Set this for 30 amps. Now 
Oh, the cosmonaut. Okay, and we've got this uh, an ammeter. We've got zero amps flowing now. And just to show you, oops, helps that the clamps close all the way. Thirty-four point six, thirty-four point five. So running about 34 amps, which is over the rating. Don't do this, but this is a convenient resistance to check for testing. And what we're going to do now is, and I'm not going to subject you to this, I'm going to do 300 presses of the button in the center, all different portions, etc., namely just stimulating casual use just to see what happens inside uh, if it causes any arcing. And we're starting now. One, two, three, four, five, six. 5, 96, 97, 98, 99, 300. Yeek. Okay. And... Let's take a look. Ouch! I keep forgetting how hot that gets. Battery is a little warm. And if we were going to get any damage, it'd either be, since this spreads out, on the inside wall or along the outside here. So I am going to, unfortunately, take a loop. I'll have to do this off camera. And I see nothing on the clutch plate. And I see little touch points, you know, where essentially where there's been pressure applied. But if there's any arcing there, it is minuscule. So there's a lot less arcing here than I've seen with uh, some other mods, and that is fantastic. Um, from the maintenance you do, you know, you don't want to take any plating off here. I'm not sure if this is solid or if this is plated, but you want to be careful if this is plated, uh, not to take the plating off and maintaining it. But inside there, you want to keep that inside edge as smooth as possible. No uh, raised points or anything like that. And then. Uh, there's certainly no, because the battery doesn't bounce back and forth, there's no arcing on um, the inside pin, namely the other side of this, or this, because the battery is held still. And that is it for the arcing test. Next, thermal testing. Okay, let's do some thermal imaging testing here. We've got uh, the Mac here. That's the uh, drip tip of my right finger. Button down here is on my left finger. And um, this is one of the two palettes I'm going to try for this thermal imaging. Let me know which one you like better. This one shows more detail. The other one shows the edges and a little more contrast. Uh, it's wrapped in a single layer of electrical tape to increase its emissivity because metal sucks at emitting infrared and you always end up reading the temperature too low. The temperature on the left-hand side of your screen running now from 23 to 29C is probably 2 degrees C too low because of the tape being a slight insulator, but we don't care about what the actual temperature is. What we care about is where's the heating? Is it down by the button? Does it come up, up excuse me, top here? Um, you won't see heating in the atomizer here because there's no coil and you can start to see just a little bit, you know, if I leave my fingers here. Um, there we go. Just a little bit of impression how sensitive this can be. I do want to mention, I forgot to earlier, that all the mechs now are getting a uh, hot soapy water toothbrush cleaning, then using a never dull uh, metal polish like crazy until the cotton is perfectly clean, the saturated cotton that it uses, and then a hot soapy water rinse and a dip in isopropyl alcohol to dry it off, with a, and then a blow dryer afterwards just to uh, get absolutely as clean as possible for all the voltage drop tests and stuff. Now the temperatures you're going to see here are not the temperatures that are typical when you're using it while vaping. This is going to be 30 amps continuous. We're just doing this to see where the heating starts. Down here, evenly through it, how evenly does the heat get pulled up? Are there hot spots anywhere in the mech? That's it. You have to chain vape like a maniac to get some of the temperatures that you're seeing here. And let's start the testing. Now, 30 amps continuous is going into the mech. Now, being copper, there's only well, one watt, two watts of heat or something, so this can take a few seconds to happen. Okay, a long time later, you can start to see that there's just the tiniest bit of heating 
like one or two degrees. You can see my fingers on the right are actually heating up the atomizer and that's starting to travel down into the mod now more than any kind of internal heating. Now that can be for two reasons. One, it's creating very little heat or number two, any heat that's created can't make it to the outside. But considering how low its voltage drop numbers were, I'm much more inclined to believe there's just very little heat being created. I see it's, it's my finger heat that's heating up the right hand side of the mod. Uh, here on the left hand side where the button is, there's just no heat reaching the outside. Now, uh, what I don't know is and what I'll peel it apart to feel the button if it's hot on the inside. Okay, that's a very long test of um, the heating on this. And let's take a quick look. If I peel off the tape, you can start to see some of the problems now in measuring bare metal. You see the tape is hot and shows you the heat, but what you see here are reflections. The dark is a cool top. The bright lights here, that's um, light sources and other stuff in the room. So it's a real problem in measuring metal, but if you put the tape on, like it's still over here, it shows you uh, nice, actually the temperature of the metal itself. Here you just see the temperature of the reflections. And let me just see if anything's warm in here. No, this is uh, all cool. So this is an incredibly cool running mod. Um, it's great to see. Certainly no hot spots uh, up at the top or at the bottom. I was rotating a little bit while firing. And that's it for today. Thank you for... Oh, wait, I'm sorry. We still have the other palette. I will fire that up. Okay, here is the other color palette. Let it shift. The fingers in it. Okay. And we'll apply 30 amps continuous. This one, I feel, has lower, it's not lower resolution, but the edges can be fuzzier when there's only a narrow range of temperatures like you see now, 22 to 29 Celsius. And I don't know if I'm actually going to be able to get this thing to warm up, so I'll bring my thumb in. So you can see there's a decent amount of detail there. Just trying to leave a thumbprint on the mech. With copper, it's always hard because there's so little heating. Yeah, not really. I uh, have rewrapped it completely in tape, that's why we're getting a nice even thing, and you can st still see the heat coming off my fingers, traveling down through the atomizer, but the button on the left hand side isn't heating up. So the differences here is, uh, it can show better uh, the hot spots, particularly if they're small hot spots, like with the thumb and little spots on the thumb where the temperature is different, but overall when the temperature is narrower like this, I think it's just a fuzzier image than the other palette that I first used. And just letting it, this isn't going to heat up any, we will peel off some of the tape here. I'll show you what happens. There's the, the warmer tape, and you can start to see now, as I peel off the tape, we just see the reflections. And we're not, measuring, we're not measuring the temperature of the metal, which is actually over here. Now, if you've got much higher temperature metals, then you've got a real problem reading temperature. Here it's all fairly close, but you can see, depending what's in the background, we're going to read completely different temperatures than what the actual temperature is on the right. So let me know, do you prefer this palette, or do you prefer, and you can see the tape here in the background, laying on the table, cooling off now. Well, if I touch it, then the tape warms up a little bit. Let me know if you prefer this one or the one before. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching.